Look at this. China brings peace. Look at the happy picture of, the, uh, of three of uh, Jimmy Dore's favorite people. Let's do this. Same same conversation. Well, I and by the way, I have no idea how long this one is. Um, so I reserve the right to bail out because we're at the end of the show. Oh, can no. drinking water no. before no bed burn 46 cannot. pounds no. in two weeks you if you are two, struggling no. to lose That's weight? Seeds. Has China negotiated that. a peace deal between Iran and Saudi Arabia. I didn't know if you didn't know that they hated each other. They did. They did. They don't hate each other anymore. It's love, sweet love. And there's a proxy war happening in Yemen. Is there a proxy war with who? So the we're we give. I guess Jimmy's going to have a hard time figuring out who's dealing with the Houthis at this point, right? If if Saudi Arabia is shrugging off United States influence, then who's? Who's firing on the... All right, we'll see. Uh, between them, Saudi state media affirmed the IRNA report with a press release. They saying Beijing, Tehran, and Riyadh announced Tehran. that an agreement has been reached between Saudi and the RAN. That includes... And the RAN. The RAN so far away. It's an agreement to resume diplomatic relations between them and reopen their embassies and missions within a period of not exceeding two months. Now, this is a huge deal. Why is this a huge deal? Because because they've never had uh, embassies. So they're reopening things that have never been opened in the first place. And that is uh, people thought that was impossible. First of all, that Saudi Arabia and Iran are getting along together last That's not them getting time. They were getting close to having diplomatic relations. Trump killed that General Soleimani, which then put a kibosh on peace talks, right? Because Israel. All right, but we'll we'll just grab this. I don't I don't know why he thinks this is what. I mean, maybe because he touched the glowing orb. Israel doesn't want this, and that's why. Oh, is, I see. I see. It, he was seen as pro, it, like. So this is really about Israel getting out of the Iran Saudi business. Why Trump did that? Because and uh, the, uh, I see. So uh, the the essence of this argument, I think, is that the that Israel controls the United States, and the United States uh, foments war on behalf of the Saudis against the Houthis to keep the Saudis from being friends with the Iranians. Dear God, I smell almonds. Trump was a puppet of Israel. I see. Good. Yeah. Okay. Israeli puppet. Donald Trump, gotcha. And so that's why he did that. I see. Okay, he he did he didn't do that because he's a macho asshole who just wanted to ha notch his belt with a terrorist death because he felt inadequate because Obama got Osama bin Laden and he's that dogged him. And he just needed something he could bring up at speeches all the time. So he so he had somebody drone strike a guy in a car on the way to the airport who wasn't engaged in military activities at the time at all and nearly started a a, a multi con uh continent war because it, his dick is small it's not because of that it's because uh israel's dick is small and they wanted trump to do that because they were scared um so they've got a it continued they also agreed that the ministers of the foreign affairs of both countries shall meet to implement this arrange for the return of their ambassadors this so they're going to be all nice to each other the yeah that's what's going to happen Watch. You, you watch. The deal also includes a commitment by Iran, Saudi Arabia, and China to make every effort to strengthen regional and international peace and security. So, yeah. Now, when the United States makes statements exactly like this, Jimmy assumes that that means the CIA and uh, and Raytheon and Walmart and Starbucks are going to send in kill squads to murder all the people and and, and foment a, a coup in those areas, right? So, uh, but when China says it, uh, you take it at face value. When it's Saudi Arabia, Iran, and China talking, it says, look, it says right there, international peace and security. Those are words that they truly respect and honor in a way we never could. The United States doesn't bring peace to the Middle East. The United States brings fire and destruction and mayhem and murder and torture mm -hmm. that's what that's how we try to get stuff together china is out there working peace deals yeah yeah that's how it's a peace deal that's how yeah absolutely it'll work out great we'll watch it all play out i have no doubt those bastards 
<laughs> the agreement calls for Tehran and Riyadh to respect other nations' sovereignty. Is there anything China won't stoop to? Right. Peace. First balloons and now this. Now <laughs> peace. Additionally, Saudi Arabia and Iran agreed to implement records, accords that were signed in 1998 and in 2001. Weird. Who's president in 1998? Obviously, uh, you know, that, that great warmonger, Bill Clinton. And, uh, and of course, 2001, they fixed it, you know, with the great peacemaker, George W. Bush. The talks between Tehran and Riyadh occurred. So both of those were like arbitrated and, uh, and, and basically the U.S. was the, the brokering group during that. And effectively, they're just going back to those. So it's pretty easy for China. They, basically, they're doing the same thing with peace deals that they did with, uh, with their other intellectual property stuff. They're just stealing it and putting their name on it. ...in Beijing this week, and the deal was inked during a ceremony Friday. China's most senior foreign policy official, Wang Yi, celebrated this as a victory. This is a victory for the dialogue, a victory for peace, and is a major positive news for the world, which is currently so turbulent and restive, and it sends a clear signal. We need to... It so does. Go to war now. Yeah, you better go... <laughs> Tehran and Riyadh cut ties in 2016 after Saudi Arabia carried out an execution of a prominent Shia cleric. Yeah, not not when Trump killed the other dude three years later because they they had already severed ties because of something Saudi Arabia did during an election year where the president... At the time was on his way out and couldn't get reelected and two people were running for the office. At the time. This yeah. resulted in protesters storming the Saudi embassy in Iran. Right. Wearing MAGA hats. Of course, most of those people were BLM and poking the end of its ties between the two nations. Tensions. So he's not going to just bring up that he was bullshitting about the whole Soleimani thing earlier he's just going to blow past that between Iran and Saudi Arabia have been inflamed by other conflicts in the Middle East and Syria. Maybe maybe read these things before you put them into the keynote and have somebody in the office that you yell at on the regular install them so you can click through them button by button. In Iraq, Saudi Arabia backed the extremist forces, meaning... Oh, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. In Syria and Iraq, Saudi Arabia backed the extremist forces and Iran backed the armies of Damascus and Baghdad, meaning the U.S. Watch, he'll make it us. It make like, the, when Saudi Arabia backed quote-unquote, the extremist forces, that means the U.S. was Between the that. two nations, tensions between Iran and Saudi Arabia have been inflamed by other conflicts in the Middle East and Syria and Iraq. Saudi Arabia backed the extremist forces, meaning ISIS and al-Nusra. That's what they mean. Saudi Arabia backed ISIS and al-Nusra in Yeah, and don't you... I mean, look, it doesn't matter. It's water under the bridge, Jimmy. They're friends with Iran now. It's all going to work out. Syria. And Iran backed the armies of backed Syria. In Yemen, look how they in Yemen, Riyadh has fought a war against the Houthis for nearly a decade. Oh, a decade. Oh, I'm sorry, a what? First of all, this is going to rub them the wrong way because hasn't the U? It, isn't this just a U.S. proxy war with Yemen that we're just doing because we feel like killing innocent Houthis? Backed the armies of backed Syria. Mm -hmm. In Yemen, uh -huh. look how they. In Yemen, Riyadh has fought a war against the Houthis for nearly a decade. <laughs> Wait, so... A, a decade. A decade. That's how... Is anybody pronounce it that way? A decade? No? Iran backed Iraq and Syria. Why are they saying it's... Uh, uh, wait a minute. Iran, in Syria and in Iraq, Saudi oh, Arabia. See. Oh, God. So not only does he not pre-read his shit and understand the concept of it, he doesn't let his guests see what he's going to reference so that, all right, maybe they don't want it. Maybe he likes to be surprised. I certainly do. Backed extremist forces. Okay. So okay. Yeah. Anyways, blah, 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 America's fault. Saudi Arabia claims the Houthis are a proxy force of Iran. Uh-huh. Ah. Ah. Uh, notice he's not doing his big ah faces. However, Riyadh...
Uh, and its supporters in Washington have failed to present credible evidence that Tehran provides any significant support to the Houthis in Yemen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, they don't even know. Who are the Houthis again? I didn't read that part. Which side are we on? Is there a side? I don't understand. So then they, this just talks about when they almost... I, honest to God, Kurt just said that to seem like he knows something when he absolutely has no idea what Jimmy's talking came about. Came close to having a peace deal. And Almost. then that General Salamami mm -hmm. arrived in Baghdad Solomami. Airport January 3rd, 2020 with a diplomatic message for Saudi Arabia. Okay, so this is the part he read where he thinks this is where they broke it off. Because it was... Because Trump fucking around and not talking to anybody. Yeah. Uh, when he was killed by American drone strike ordered by President Donald Trump. By the way, this is from antiwar.com. So this is their their take on why. Trump That's why he had to be has to be Israel. They wanted to kill him forever. That Because he was going to make peace. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hold on. Saudi Arabia sought to improve relations with Iran. Baghdad attempted to foster diplomacy between its two neighbors. Iranian General Qasem Soleimani arrived at the Baghdad airport on the, with a diplomatic message from Saudi Arabia when he was killed by an American drone strike ordered by President Donald Trump. Soleimani's death ended negotiations until 2021. So the Biden administration s started negotiations, in negotiations again in 2021. Or the, you know, or during the Biden administration, the, the Iraqis started back up in 2021. Because it was somebody else in D.C. I guess. American drone strike ordered by President Donald Trump. That's why he had to be has to had, Israel. They wanted to kill him forever. That because he was going to make peace. Oh my God! W that's what a why coincidence. They, that's exactly what they would. What a coincidence. It, does Jimmy know that that Kurt is pooping? He is genuinely, I, that's the only reason to make that kind of a noise. Oh my God. When I, ugh. and it's not, it's not going quietly into that good night. It is, it, is it just me? Good Due Lord. to Zelensky, if he made peace, they would kill him. Wow, the world. Right. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, that was, it was a threat. They threatened him. That's. The, the Russians want peace desperately, but Zelensky's afraid for his life. The world is our Fred Hampton. <laughs> that's right. So that's why Trump did that. Yeah, because Israel made him. But he's still better than Biden uh, because something else. Trita Prarsi, executive vice president. RRC. You don't have to add extra R's. One's fine. Of the Quincy Institute said the deal was good news. This agreement is good news for the Middle East since Saudi Iranian tensions have been a driver instability in the region. You Wait, think? Are you sure they just couldn't find Soleimani the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> so some people. Do I think he thinks he was making a point. I, I guess that they, they started the deal making again in 2021 because they just thought he disappeared and they were like us. Oh, so I mean, he must've just never made it home. And that's funny. Disagree. Of course it's, it's hard to joke and poop at the same time. I assume, um, I've never tried it in the same way that Kurt's never tried to joke, but that's, <laughs> this is a great thing. And it's bad for America because, but it's great because it's bad for us. China's get, got a lot more influence now in the Middle East because of this. Recall how the United States assassinated Soleimani and Soleimani Ani while he was on his way to peace talks with Saudi Arabia. With Netanyahu and Pompeo as the main lobbyists for that lethal, lethal strike, Israel seems to have just lost its main coalition partner in the regional war it planned against Iran. I'm... Um. It wouldn't be a Jimmy Dore video if he didn't read someone else's work and go, hmm? Um, hmm. It's, a, it's a good look. Dude. I don't know why that's not the face he doesn't use on all of his thumbnails. Just move the mic out of the way and take a picture and just have that be the thumbnail for everything. Hmm? Um, it's sort of the face version of the noise Kurt makes. I mean, look, it's a peace deal in the Middle East. It's obviously got legs. Finally, we've got one. And uh, I think it's I think it's permanent. So uh, uh, Israel loses another uh, partner in the war. And America and uh, the Saudi Iran. By the way, he thinks 
Saudi Arabia would be Israel's partner in war against Iran. That that's what they were counting on. Not that Saudi Arabia would like, uh, or, uh, I suppose that they would, they wouldn't sit it out that they would join Israel or that they would just make opportunistic strikes against Iran if Israel decided to fuck with them. Peace brokered by China today may very well be the cornerstone for Petroy Petro Yuan. Petro Yuan. Petro. Petro Yuan. No. But good luck. Wanda. Petro Yuan. That's it. No. Do you see a W there, dum dum? Yuan. Yuan. Run it together. Yuan. That's how you say it. Petro Yuan. Just give it a try. If you're going to pretend to know about this shit, at least practice. That's instead of a petrodollar, we have I see. a petro yuan. Or a yuan. Meaning that they're going to start. Because yuan, uh, um, I think you're thinking of a Pedro yuan. Uh, one, or Juan Pedro, who's a great guy. Selling oil in Chinese currency, which is bad for the United States economy. No, it isn't. Because that will damage the petrodollar and i don't want to explain what that what is again because you don't know what that is again there is no petrodollar any more than there is a petro phone or there is a petro plastic or or the you know or a, sorry a a a plastic dollar or a phone dollar or a corn dollar but the petrodollar is what saudi arabia does for I don't want to explain it again, but I'm going to explain it for us. And it props up our dollar, which is why every country in the world uses the United States dollar as their reserve currency. And they use it to trade with each other. It's because of the petrodollar. It's going away because now they're going to start selling oil in Chinese currency, which they've never done before. Well, yes. And and that sounds it, just ask any financial trader. That's the safest path forward. I, don't, I mean, I don't know how to even cover the ignorance that we're seeing here Ugh. how could that harm us free market competition yeah <laughs> and then it's also paving the way for this BRICS, which is this new uh, uh mm -hmm. please tell me about the BRICS magic uh thermo bitcoin another economic power center away mm -hmm. from the united states it's got russia mm -hmm. in it it's got Brazil in it. It's got, I think, India. Um, is Venezuela in it? Any it's so that would be BRICS plus. You're thinking of China and South Africa. Anyway, so this is the and they got three oil producers. It's got three. No way. Russia, Saudi Arabia, and Iran. How hard will it be to create a new currency that's backed by oil and gas? Not hard. Not hard at all. I can't wait to see it. I would. I can't wait for four authoritarian governments to have a conversation about whose dollar should be the prime mover in this equation. Because at least they'll, you know, the other three will be free of the U.S. dollar and its pesky demands. And they won't get any pesky demands at any point in the future from whoever the big dog in the room room is. And I'm sure that the Russians are going to be happy to use the yuan. And I'm sure that the Chinese would be overjoyed to use the ruble. It's the strongest, fastest growing currency in the world, you know. Um, the Indian rupee, I mean, it may have more of it in circulation materially than, than the yuan or the, the ruble, but... You know, I, I'm sure they'd be happy to sublimate and tie the worth of their currency to China's um, manipulation of their currency. What could possibly go wrong? Endless possibilities in a. I don't even the South African real. What is the I, that? Uh, does it even have a shot? Multipolar. So everything. Endless, endless possibilities in a multipolar world. Everything's coming up roses. They said Trump was supposed to do. He was, they're doing. Yes, everything Trump was supposed to do, China was doing, which is uh, build up dictators and authoritarian governments and shit all over democracy worldwide.
yeah, he's just he's a failure. That but it, it's not for a lack of trying. He's saber rattling with nuclear powers, talking about they're talking about putting troops in Mexico, invading our neighbors. They're who's they? You mean Trump? They're alienating the rest of the world against us, so they now form economic power centers against us. They said mm-hmm. Trump was going to do this. Biden and his oligarchy is doing this. Oh, I see. So uh, Biden is. No, I, I think the concern with Trump was, was that he would align with these dictators and and distance us from our actual allies. And if you'll recall, he was soft on Russia and, you know, to a, a bizarre fault and was deferential to Xi Jinping during the first six months of the of the pandemic until it, it looked like he would cost him the election and he got mad at him finally. The, the worry was he would align himself with the Kim Jong Un of the world that that he would align himself with Xi Jinping and 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 think of you know it's why he was saying shit like President for Life sounds pretty good when he would talk about Xi Jinping and distances uh, you know distance us from our democratic allies in the Western world if if I if I recall reality you are witnessing a historic moment China. Oh, I know it. China brokering the deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran is both the icing and the cherry on top. Yeah, everybody grab a spoon. It's all good. <laughs> there's, honestly, there's just no way it can go south. It's just like when uh, China moved into Afghanistan. They, I mean, it's been pretty sweet the entire time. They, I mean, there have been a couple of hotel bombings and a targeting of Chinese civilians by large terrorist groups, and the Taliban have had to... Uh, do raids on civil, you know, uh, civilian areas that they believe are hotbeds for ISIS, uh, ISIS K. Um, but you know, yeah, when it comes to women and children, you you make an omelet, you got to break some eggs, you know. And when America does it, it's obviously terrible, and we want to stop it. But when another country does it, we just have to understand it's a cultural, it's diversity is our strength worldwide. They did worldwide. more than decades. They did more than decades of the U.S. bringing peace to the region and have cemented themselves as true mediators on the world stage. It's a huge win. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a huge win. It's enormous. Um, What what did they do? They, They got them to return to the relationship they had brokered largely by the United States before 2016, before Trump was in office. When he was doing all that fuckery back and forth where he was favoring the Saudis and then he ended up killing the the general, which obviously you think was pivotal for them to not talk anymore, or at least antiwar.com does. And uh, I mean, I look, there's obviously um, one of the things Jimmy hates is the CIA, man. The, th- the fact that the CIA foments coups and makes is in, you know, strange bedfellows with these violent dictatorships and overthrows governments and that kind of stuff. You know, when, when the CIA does that is the worst of the worst or whatever, when China does it, it's, it's a win for peace. Uh, and here's one more last for, it says fresh out of the oven. Xi Jinping plans to speak with Voldemort Zelensky. Voldemort. Yes. Voldemort. That's his name. For the first time since the start of the Ukraine war, likely after he visits Moscow next week to meet with Vladimir Putin. According- it's Voldemort Putin. According to- so China is going to be the peacemaker now in the world and the United States is the world's terrorist because we are. Yeah, of course we are. And that's why Jimmy lives here. It's, it's one thing to think your country sucks on a generalized level, but when you're, you know, when you're, suckling off the teat of the bear that slaughters the villagers i at some point don't aren't you partly culpable at some point obviously i look forward to him moving to i don't know uh an uncharted caribbean island where he can be free of the 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 sins of the father we're the country most other countries fear the most is the united Uh uh-huh yes we're the country they fear the most which is why when there's a natural disaster that wrecks an entire country the first phone call they make is to the president of the United States. It's because they're like, hey, we're down. You might as well finish us off. States and by a long shot. Yes, by a long shot. Well, we're everything by a long shot. 
Uh, so again, there you go. Uh, your country's being run by psychopathic murderers for money. And China's leader is a is a, a lovable teddy bear, a Winnie the Pooh, if you will, of of joy and happiness, who only wants peace for the world. He wants peace and freedom, and he wants you know uh, a sort of libertarian s socialism that uh, everybody can enjoy. And if you just let him, it'd be so good. And he knows, you know, he knows how to talk the language of murderous dictators, which is a skill we've apparently lost, and I don't know why. And they don't care if they break other countries, and they certainly don't care if they break our country or wreck our petrodollar. That's yeah, wreck our petrol well, again. Good luck. I look forward to their crypto coin that you were touting last. That's what they're doing. Anything you want to add to this, Kurt? Yeah, Kurt, can you fill us in on something? Do you are you done pooping? I mean, I hope they look out for all the banks when this happens. Me too. <laughs> all right. Keep voting blue, fuckface. If you want to see my... Did you, did you hear that? Like, he talks about how Trump literally assassinated a guy on behalf of Israel to stop a peace deal before, but it's, it's Biden's fault because something about banks... Anything you want to add to this, Kurt? I mean, I hope they look out for all the banks when this happens. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, who are you talking about? It, this is one of those moments where, Kurt, perhaps some improv training. Um, I know you're trying to yes and here, but uh, you can't yes sir. You got to actually try to, never mind, just keep smoking pot, dude. It's, uh, it's all you need. It's, the, it's what Jimmy has you there for. He just likes, the, he likes the, the, the odor, the skunk coming off of you. It makes him feel at home. I... Um, you know, it's, it's lovely that we have peace in our time. And uh, it's it, for people who don't know China, aren't interested in knowing China, don't speak Chinese, have never been there. Uh, you know, I, I hope that they live in a Truman Show like cloche the rest of their lives, not knowing uh, the extent of the awful that the, these partnerships are meant to create. Um, and that when they fall apart, the the violence that uh, the that we saw in Iraq um, will look like that between the United States and Iraq and Afghanistan. Once the Chinese decide to exercise their military might in these areas, um, because they feel safe enough, they feel uh, you know insulated enough that they don't need the you know the resources. Um, of these countries or that they can claim them flat out. They will do the whole roll in. They will keep the oil and they will nationalize it. They will claim it as a people uh, in a way that the United States and uh, Europe couldn't do. Um, even if we, you know, even if the companies wanted to, we couldn't do it. Whereas China absolutely could. China could just decide this is Chinese property now. And uh, I'm, I'm sure it'll all go very, very well. It's going to last. There won't be any extra, you know, the, the Houthis are going to stand down. Yemen's going to go quiet. The Syrian conflict will, will cease because Saudi Arabia and Iran are back to where they were in 2016 when none of this, oh yeah, all of it was still happening.